Hi and welcome to this video. My name is Brent Weinberg. I'm a neuroradiologist and today I'm going to teach you a little bit about looking at uh, magnetic resonance angiograms or MRAs of the head. I'll teach you how to take a look at them and why you might be doing them and what sorts of things you might be looking for. First, some of the indications for MR angiograms you should know about. You'll typically be looking for occlusion, aneurysm, or vascular malformation. Many times patients will have strokes or TIA symptoms or history of stroke, concern for stroke, and you'll be doing an MR angiogram to get a closer look at those vessels to see if there's a vascular cause that you can identify. Sometimes you'll be doing a search for aneurysm in patients who have a family history of aneurysm, or if they have a sudden onset headache that makes them concerning for subarachnoid hemorrhage. Sometimes you may also do an aneurysm search in people who have systemic conditions that predispose them to aneurysm, such as polycystic kidney disease. Finally, you may be doing MRAs in patients that are suspected to have vascular malformations based on findings from another imaging study or clinical symptoms, such as pulsable tinnitus. In general, when I approach an MRA, I start from the anterior circulation, first moving from right to left, then I move to the posterior circulation, moving from right to left. And then finally, once I've done that, I take a look at some of the three-dimensional projectional data. When I work through the anterior circulation, as I mentioned, I work from right to left. I'll start by looking at the internal carotid artery and its branches. I'll look at the terminal branches of the ICA, which are the middle cerebral artery, or MCA, and anterior cerebral artery, or ACA. And then I'll look for the anterior communicating artery. Similarly, I'll move to the left and I'll follow the same pattern. So let's get into some images. Here we have some axial images from a time of flight MR angiogram of the head. Typically, you're going to see these images. Uh, they're the source images for the study. And you're going to have essentially not much signal coming from anything other than the vessels, which you see here. And I take a systematic approach to these studies. I first look at the anterior vessels and then I come back around and look at the posterior vasculature. So what you'll see as you scroll up, you've got a couple of major vessels here and as you get a little closer to the skull base, it's going to be easier to follow them. These two vessels you have here are the paired uh, internal carotid arteries and I usually start with the right one and I'll follow the internal carotid artery up through the petrous canal. So here you see it entering the skull base. It's going to turn anteriorly and go up before becoming the cavernous carotid. And what you're going to see is it's going to turn anterior here and then come back uh, once it leaves the cavernous sinus. Now here you see this is the origin of the ophthalmic artery. So it's a little bit obscured and you see a tiny little outpouching there, but that's probably just a normal origin. Then you want to follow this internal carotid all the way up as it's going to become two vessels. So here are the end vessels. This is the A1 segment of the right anterior cerebral artery and laterally it's going to become the MCA. So you see the MCA branches in the sylvian fissure here. So while I'm looking at that I will follow these smaller branches out into the deeper parts of the sylvian fissure. I'll try to take a look for symmetry to make sure they're similar to the other side. While you're looking, you're looking for any areas of narrowing, any outpouchings that look like aneurysms. You want to come back and you want to take a look then at your ACA. So your ACA is going to come forward and go through the falks here. Right here you have your anterior communicating artery or ACOM. And as you come a little higher, uh, you're going to have two paired anterior cerebral arteries here. And these are the more distal segments, the A2 and A3 segments, as they travel along the falcs there. And again, you want to look at them grossly for overall symmetry. Look for any areas of narrowing as they come up higher along the falcs. So once I've completed that, then I'm happy with my right internal carotid artery. I'm going to come all the way back down and I'm going to repeat the process with my left internal carotid artery. So here I'll start in the neck again. Slowly scroll up as I'm following this for any areas of narrowing through the petrous canal into the cavernous sinus once it's going to turn anterior here. Similarly, uh, you have the ophthalmic artery right here, so you have a little origin there. It's going to go into the orbit. You can see it right here. And then you're going to have the terminal carotid here. 
you have your A1 segment here. It's going to come up again and join that anterior, the anterior cerebral arteries. And then you're going to have this left MCA, which is sitting in the sylvian fissure here. Again, you want to follow up all these branches in the sylvian fissure, make sure they're grossly symmetric. So this anterior circulation is grossly normal. Once you're finished looking at the anterior circulation, then I move on to the posterior circulation. I have a similar pattern for this. I'll move from right to left. So I'll start by looking at the right vertebral artery. I'll take a look at the pica as it comes off. Then I'll go back down and look at the left vertebral artery and look for its pica as well. I'll look at the midline structures, so mainly the basilar artery. It has two main branches you want to look for, the ica and the sca. And then once you get to the uh, basilar bifurcation, you want to look at both posterior cerebral arteries and look for a posterior communicating artery as well. And I'll do that first on the right and then on the left. To look at the posterior circulation, we're going to do a similar approach to the anterior circulation. We'll start on the right. We'll follow this vertebral artery. As it comes up, it's going to turn posteriorly before making another turn and entering the dura. It's very common for the vertebral arteries to be slightly narrowed as they enter the dura. Then the intracranial portion is going to come up and join the other vertebral artery, which you see here. Now we didn't see much of a pica on that side, but we're going to see one on the other side. So once we've seen that, we come back, take a look at this vertebral artery. It's a little bit tortuous here, so it's coming in and out of the slices. But you'll see it again back here. And then it's going to enter the foramen magnum, again entering the dura. As we scroll up, we're going to see a small pica coming off here. This is going to supply the inferior aspect of that left cerebellum. That looks normal. You see more pica swirling branches here. And that vertebral artery is going to join the right to become the basilar artery, which we see here. And the first significant branch of the basilar artery, which you want to pay attention to, is the ica, or anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Here you see one on the right. And you're going to know you're at the level of the ica when you're near the level of the internal auditory canal, because the vessel that most closely goes to the internal auditory canal is the ica. So you see one on that side. We have a slightly smaller one on this side. That kind of makes sense because we saw a pretty large pica on that side. So sometimes there can be some variation in that supply. The last basilar branch we'll see is the superior cerebellar artery which we'll get into right before the basilar termination. So here's the superior cerebellar artery on the right. And then we have a paired one on the left here. So we see it wrapping around the midbrain here. Those are symmetric and don't have any areas of narrowing. Now as you come finally to the tip of the basilar artery, you want to check for any aneurysm there. And you see the PCA bifurcation here. So the right PCA is here. The left PCA is here, so we'll follow the right. The PCOM would ordinarily be located right here, but we don't really see much of a posterior communicating artery. But we see the PCA branches swinging around the midbrain, coming along the tentorium and supplying the occipital lobe. We're going to see similar findings on the left side. Again, a PCA coming around the cerebral peduncle along the tentorium and supplying the inferior aspects of the occipital lobe. Both of those are symmetric and we don't see any areas of occlusion. As part of almost every MR angiogram, you're going to have some projectional images. These are thick slice maximum intensity projection images that the technologists have created to make it easier for you to see a general overview of the vessels. Many times they will have certain vessels cut out so you can only see uh, the anterior circulation or the posterior circulation at one time. These will be projected at radial angles to give it a rotational effect as you uh, scroll through. These I tend to use for troubleshooting. I'll recheck for subtle findings. For example, is there a subtle aneurysm that I missed? And then I'll also take a look for global trends, such as is one cerebral hemisphere less perfused than the other? So let's take a look at these. Here we're looking at a projectional data of the posterior circulation. What this is, is this is a MIP or maximum intensity projection image of the whole study where the posterior circulation has been cut out. Uh, so you're seeing only the posterior circulation and the internal carotids are not included. So this gives you a nice overview of the anatomy that you're looking at. Uh, you can see the right vertebral artery here comes, makes a turn and enters the frame of magnum, comes up. 
Here you have the left vertebral artery, so those are going to join to form the basilar artery, which you see here. You can see a couple of the larger branches here. Here you have the right AICA, the ICA, and here this gives you a nice view of the basilar tip. The basilar tip should be this Y-shaped vessel, and you should have the superior cerebellar arteries coming off at each side, so you get this nice look. It can be a little bit larger here, but you want to make sure it's not uh, too aneurysmal. The PCAs you see uh, going off to either side. And then these images are going to be sent in a uh, rotation. So you can actually rotate uh, your view, get a look at some of the vessels like as you rotate through. So you're kind of seeing them from a variety of angles. Here you're looking from almost directly overhead, similar to your axial projection. You've got your verts, your PCAs here and you can kind of rotate all the way around until they're upside down. So this gives you a nice view of all the sides of the artery, so you can, uh, can see those and look for any aneurysms that may be hidden. Similarly, you're going to have a projection of the anterior circulation, and here you can kind of window it so you can see it a little better. This is the same type of image, only the posterior circulation has been removed. It gives you, again, a nice overview of the anterior circulation. You see the anterior carotid or internal carotid arteries supplying the anterior circulation here. You see the turns that they have. Here's the left. It's going to come up. Here's your carotid terminus here forming an A1 segment of the ACA and the M1 segment of the left MCA. You see the MCA branches out in the sylvian fissure here. Similarly, on this side, you get a nice overview these images are a very nice way to look at the arborization out in the cilian fissure. Sometimes if you have a stroke or an occluded vessel, you may not see the occlusion itself, but you may see the absence of vessels more distally or a paucity of vessels on one side. Here you see the ACAs coming up and going along the fox. Similarly, you can rotate this. They've created a rotation rotating around it. So you can see both carotids here. You can see as you come from lateral, You've got uh, the vessels in the sylvian fissure here, and you can see the ACAs here. So you want to look for any aneurysm, look for any stenosis that you couldn't appreciate. If you see anything that looks abnormal, then what you want to do is go back and correlate that to your axial images. Finally, you'll often have one set of rotational images which show both the anterior and posterior circulation. So here you can see both on a thick MIP here. And again, you can rotate through this, see the orientation of the vessels themselves. Uh, here is where the normal posterior communicating arteries would be. Uh, you're not really seeing much of a posterior communicating artery in this patient. Here you can see a nice view of the anterior communicating artery there though. Uh, and again, this just gives you an overview, a nice way to look at the vessels, see the arborization pattern, uh, and kind of look for any areas which are inadequately supplied or any cutoffs that you missed on the other projections. In summary, when you're looking at an MRI angiogram of the head, a couple of key things you need to know. One, you should know what you're looking for. Look for narrowing or occlusion. Look for aneurysms. Look for potential vascular malformations. And then have a systematic pattern for looking at the vessels. For me, I move from anterior to posterior and from right to left. And we've been through that today, so just keep that in mind as you go through your MRAs of the head. Thank you for your attention today. Uh, if you're interested, take a look at some of our other videos that we have on our channel. We have some other search patterns and uh, other videos that you may find of interest, or you can check out the website at learnneuroradiology.com.